it's time for a new review and this time I thought it'd be fun to take a look at another plug and play game made by our good buddies over at Jack Pacific. The franchise to get treated by their wondrous hands today is none other than the Disney name as a whole. I believe they released it in 2004, although I'm not 100% sure on it. Let's find out if this is another stinker or if it's actually some fun to play. But first, as always, let's have a closer look at the unit itself. The first thing you might notice is that they actually use a pretty boring design for this thing. There's no Mickey face or anything, just a Disney logo to make it uh, Disney themed. It has a uh, rather flimsy joystick which isn't too great and a big and a small button which I'll call just that, which I find kind of ingenious since there's no where's the A button, where's the A button crap when someone plays this for the first time. Uh, on the front we have a standard on off switch with uh, LED power indicator, a Mickey shaped uh, start pause button and a reset button which already is useless since the internal battery is dead which is really fast for a 5 year old unit. It takes 4 AA batteries and normally of course there's a battery door but I don't have that one so I don't have to mess with the screw. The battery life is rather long on this thing since uh, these batteries aren't the greatest but I did a whole review on them so that's pretty cool. Uh, it comes with standard uh, audio video hookups, it only has mono sound so that's a bit of a shame but that's also really standard with these plug and play things. And that's basically it, let's check out the games on this thing. When you power on the unit you eventually get to the menu after a bunch of copyright junk. The menu itself is very boring, there's no music, the games have no names and the only way to see what game is selected is that the character's head lights up and looks the other way. You'll notice there are 5 games, 2 of which from the same franchise, nice. So let's take a closer look at them and let's start from the right, just so we can be different that way. Every time you start a game you get a little text with the title, game explanation and uh, plot of the game. Yeah, those are just tagged on. I'm sorry but I just can't take any text series that start with Rafiki the wise old baboon. It just sounds too funny like that. Anyway, in Simba and the Tree of Trials you'll find a puzzle game, much in the sense of columns. You need to match up 4 of the same fruits to make them go away. Fruit will fall in blocks of 4 which you can rotate to match your fruit. You can also make combos and there are fire and ice blocks which you need to match together to get rid of those. It's all pretty basic really and easy enough to pick up and just play for anyone. This game starts out very easy with slow falling blocks and only a few different fruits. As you advance it will go faster and more fruits will turn up. The music in this will just drive you insane. It's way too short and loops over and over. Luckily you can turn it off in the pause menu, but for your annoyance I will keep it running during this review. Better get used to crappy music, we still got 4 games to go after this. The big problem I have with this game is that it starts out way too slow. I think for one that the board is just too wide giving you too much room to work with. By the time it gets challenging you'll be like 30 minutes in, just insane. Not really smart of the developers as we are playing against a time limit after all. It's called battery life. Even though the batteries do last pretty long, a game dependent on them shouldn't take as long to complete. Also when the game does become more difficult it tends to get to a point where it just says alright screw it. Forget those baby steps from the previous 10 levels, I'm going in 5th gear now bitch. It just quickly gets faster and it has even the nerve to introduce two new fruits at the same time, holy crap! Luckily the controls in this game work fairly well, no real complaints there. In the end it's just a real shame it takes half an hour to get to the challenging part. I'm not going through that boar fest again. Let's check out Aladdin and the 5 gems of Agrabah, which he apparently needs to haggle for Jasmine's freedom. This is a platforming game and I've said it before and I will say it again, these games do not work well with a joystick. It's just too slippery and often you'll duck or walk up or down ladders by accident, very annoying. The object of the game is to reach the end of the levels. The big button jumps and the small one throws an apple which can stun enemies. Aladdin has a health bar in the form of a loaf of bread? Anyway, the number next to that is the amount of hits you can take. You take damage from enemies but only if they attack you and also from falling. I kind of like the idea of falling damage, were it not that the controls are so slippery that you end up suffering this type of damage the most. It also doesn't help that the game is such a fan of pixel perfect jumping over high pits. This really makes the game really hard. 
Every segment has two levels. The first is just there to overcome. The second has a gem hiding in it somewhere you need to take to the exit. Most of the time they aren't too hard to find really. There are 10 levels in total I guess, but only 3 environments which seems a bit lazy. The music is crap again of course, and the graphics don't look that hot either. Although the animation looks pretty decent I guess. On the street level it takes a while before you know what you can and cannot pass through. It's not too clear really. Aladdin also seems to be a bit transparent. I mean look when he's all macho when completing a level. He almost looks like the Hulk. Did he trade places with the genie or something? Where's that blue blob anyway? Let's move on to Donald's Golf Tournament. There's not much to really say about this one. It's golf and it actually plays fairly well. There are only 18 holes but there are 3 skill levels that I think mostly control wind and hook slice effects. You can also play in 2 players but both players will play as Donald, which is kinda weird. They might as well have made it for 4 players then. What's also weird is that putting is so stupidly hard. I had more luck getting the ball in from chipping than from putting. I think the green arrow means how the grass goes but I just seem to have such a hard time. When I get on the green and not in the hole I know I'm screwed in this game. The computer is no pushover either. See Pluto is a... Wait a minute Pluto? That's a dog! Dogs don't play golf! On to Stitch's search for paradise. Alright here they really did a good one on the title and the story dang. Stitch fell in a cave when looking through Lilo's photos and now you need to get him out and find him again on your way out. First of all who keeps their photos next to a big hole in the ground to fall through? What on earth was on those pictures I wonder? Next where does this paradise come into play exactly? Seems to me he just wants to go home. Or it's new home, whatever. We best not overthink this too much I guess. This game is actually kind of interesting. For one, I have no idea where they ripped off this idea from. Could it be a fully original idea? Eh, probably not. But still, it's a decent game execution. It's also a platforming game, but much slower paced than Aladdin, making it more suitable to play with the joystick. The big button jumps, and when pressing down the small one, you get a target line. Letting go will launch Stitch in that direction in a ball form. This way he can jump much higher and also bounce off of walls to reach otherwise impossible to reach areas. There are some obstacles like water and beds but nothing can really kill you. Your only enemy is the time limit and maybe Lilo if you don't find all of her pictures along the way. There are only 5 levels and plenty of time to explore them. The game is a bit easy but seeing as it's also rather slow it's a good thing that it doesn't last much longer. At the end you get to see how many photos you've gotten at the ending screen. I got all of them in my first try. Well that's weird, she will be extremely pleased. He hit them again or something. She's right there kissing him. Alright, that's it. I can't stand this happy do goody. Aliens should blow stuff up. Time to make her cry. And I really did try. I tried to get as little of her stupid pictures as I could. Now that's a real challenge. I managed to get just 14 that time and she still kisses him. She's even happy now. In the present time. Great. Let's just drown Pumbaa and team on to the rescue instead then. This is another puzzle game. Pumbaa needs to get to the other side so you need to rotate the road to form a safe path for him. I don't really see why, I say let him jump in the water, that'll wake him up for sure. But oh well. Of course you're up against the time limit, which makes me nervous and totally goes against the whole Hakuna Matata spirit. After the game tricks you a couple of times, you'll learn to see through its trickery and it's rather easy then really. There are 41 levels in total, which is a weird number. For kids it might be a nice challenge. Overall I think it's important to remember that these games are mainly aimed at children and that they should be accessible. For that this package does kind of work and it can introduce kids to different kinds of genres. Although the Aladdin game is really way too hard. Otherwise it's just a real shame that these things are made so cheaply. Just charge 2 extra bucks per unit and put some more effort into the presentation of the different games. It can make a huge difference. I just can't recommend this one either. It's not the worst plug and play game out there, it's just that you'll find lots of more fun with similar games on other systems and they are usually cheaper too. It's just a franchise tagged onto some cheap rip off games once again. Oh well, that's it for this time. I'm bound to run into a great plug and play game at some point you think? 
but it wasn't this time unfortunately. We'll see what the future holds for us. Thank you all very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.